Coming up on opening night, I talk to the fabulous Alison Quigan about acting, directing and writing hit plays and the wonderful and ridiculous Donna Brookbanks about the challenges of improv and then I give it a go. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Opening Night, where we meet and greet greats of the New Zealand performing arts scene, as well as give you a heads up as to what's on around the country and who's having an opening night, both here and overseas. Well, first up, I had the pleasure of sharing a dressing room with my first guest when we appeared in Roger Hall's Last Legs last year for the Auckland Theatre Company. And let me tell you, if ever you need someone to calm your nerves before a performance, it's this lady. I admire you. You're my hero and... I love you, Mum. And I wanted to come here in person not only to thank you, but to give you... these. Oh, OK. Mum, I thought you'd be a bit more happy. It's just that you wrote all that stuff and it's incredible stuff and it's all very true. And then... Flowers? Uh... Flowers you can just pick from the garden. Yeah, but I... Th I just figured that... I burst you from out of my vagina. I mean, right out of it. But I guess these make up for all the stitches. You think that's gross? I shat myself, and that was not the most traumatic part. Shit, Mum. You know, your head is the same size as it was when you were born. You tore me into a semi-circle. There's just one hole down there now. Oh, there was so much oh. blood, the doctor passed out, and I had to deliver you on my own. That can't be true. I sat through every one of your stupid recitals, not to mention the thousands of dollars I spent on toys and clothes and keeping a roof over your head, and the hours I spent re-strengthening my pelvic floor. TMI! TMI! Sarah bought her mother a Kindle reader with an internal backlight. You can read it on the plane! Yeah, they are pretty good. I am the laughing stock of our book club, and you're bringing me flowers. Flowers! OK, I'll get you a Kindle. Oh, no. I know what I'm worth to you now. Well, can I still come in? Yes. Cool. I bought my laundry. Welcome, Alison Quigan. Oh, thank you, Lou. So lovely to see you again. And you. And you. <laughs> um, so you're a Palmerston North girl? I am. Mm -hmm. I am. Born I and bred? I was, yes. yes. And so did your career, acting career start off there? Uh, it sort of did. I trained up here in Auckland at Theatre Corporate in 1978. Then I toured, you know, um, freelancing around the country and ended up back in Palmerston North as the artistic director in 1986. And I stayed there until 2004. Is there a lot of work for actors in Palmerston North? <laughs> Only the ones I created. Oh, well, hey, <laughs> very much like me. Have your own theatre company, then you can cast yourself in the lead. <laughs> Actually, I tried not to, <laughs> but the, it did come to a point where I was the only, I was the cheapest middle-aged ac middle actress in Palmerston North, so I'm certainly in the lower th North Island that I could afford. So yeah, I was the one that did some of those roles. And I mean, that sort of brings out the whole thing about acting, in that you have to make your own work half the time, don't you? I think you do more so now than we did when when I started. When I started, you get you'd get a year-long contract sometimes. Wow! Um, I know. I had a year-long contract at Theatre Corporate. How fantastic! And at Mercury, people had Mercury Theatre people had year-long contracts at Centre Point, at Court Theatre, and in Dunedin. So um, at Fortune Theatre, people would have a decent length of contract. And you, sometimes you would be playing a small role, and sometimes you would um, find your way to the middle. So it was like rep. Yeah. In, in England in that way. Oh, except that we didn't do several plays at once. With rep, there was, you know, you rehearsed a play, you put it on, and then you rehearsed another one, and then you would have a series of plays that you could um, do, like the Pop-Up Globe does now. Yes. Um, but at that time, no, no, you'd, you'd rehearse a play for four weeks, put it on, and then um, you maybe you toured it to schools or mm. yeah, around the... But the pay would be a hell of a lot better now, wouldn't it? Um, well, we lived on that, you really? know. Really? Mm. I, mean, I remember getting, in 1979, getting $80 a week, which actually... <laughs> You and know, you lived on that? We lived on that. You're kidding 1979. me. 1979. We toured on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, sort of uh, born in paper bag at Middle Road. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll get back to the acting thing. But Ali, something that I did read about you was that you, you've been quite heavily influenced by Catholicism when you were younger, haven't you? 
Well, yes, we lived and breathed it when I was young, you know, we were a big family and... Uh, six kids? Uh, six kids in ours, and then of course, my father's family w was 11 in his, so I had 11 lots of, bro of, of cousins, and that, that was all very heavily influenced uh, with, with the church. My parents built a church. Wow, um, okay. Along with all their neighbours and fellow um, members of the con congregation, they built a church, um, because in the 50s there wasn't one where they wanted to live or where they were living. So um, they built it. But you going into theatre, did that seem to be a bit naughty? Um, no, no, not really. Um, I mean, there's a, an element of performance in Catholic Church because of all of the vestments, you know, costumes, um, because of the scripts, you know, uh, and because of the performance, you know, the, 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 the rituals that go along with it. And I know a lot of people who are uh, performers who have been influenced by having that in their background. They're used to that kind of performance, I guess. And does it still have a big influence in your life? The, the Catholic Church? Yeah. No, no, not really. I mean, it's there. Have you strayed, Ellie? <laughs> yes, I have strayed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I'm a lapsed. Oh. I'm a lapsed Catholic. We've all lapsed, love. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. No, no, not really. Um, I, I, I have difficulty with a lot of the, um, uh, I wouldn't say misogynist, but maybe I should, mm. um, the whole idea that women can't be priests or and there can't be a female pope. I just right. find all that a bit silly, really. Yeah, okay. No, that's fair enough. Um, theatre corporate, mm. how was that different to, say, the drama schools today? Because that was a living, working, breathing drama school, wasn't it? It was, actually. As opposed to a classroom. Yes, actually, you're right. It was different in that. I've just told you the difference. No, no, no. But the I didn't fact need to ask you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that there was, you know, there was the branch. We were the first students. There was me and Mark Hadlow and Sarah Pierce. Oh, Donner, God, Hadlow. Donner. How'd you cope working with him? <laughs> well, we did really well. <laughs> we kept him under, in a cage. You'd have to. Um, no. Yeah. Um, but, but, so we were the first class, but uh, in terms of a school, uh, but at the same time, they already had a theatre and education wing and they had the resident company wing. And so you knew when you started that you were about to perform next year here, next year there, if you were lucky. Mm. And so, yes, it was living, breathing um, machine of theatre. And that's ne never really been uh, continued, actually. It was quite a good model. What sort of age were you when you did that? I was 25, nearly 26. Mm. Mm. Do you think that's a good age to go to drama school? rather than younger? Yes, I do, but then everybody is different. I mean, some people are very ready at... Mm, I, I think 16, 17, 18 is too young mm. because you actually need to get some of that, you know, stuff out of the way. And because you, it's you, very you have to have life experience, don't you? Absolutely. And yeah. you have to be able to be observant of other people. And, and at 16, 17, 18, you're just... You well, know. you're just on your cell phone the whole time, <laughs> aren't you? You <laughs> didn't have cell phones. No, yes. no. Um, so... In terms of Centrepoint, where you were artistic director, that was professional theatre? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It had been going since 1974, and it's still going now. So it was, it's the only professional theatre outside the main cities. In fact, Dunedin has just closed theirs. So, um, and in Wellington, it's almost impossible to get a, a proper wage at, in Wellington. I just in don't theater. get that. Why no. is that? Wellington, I mean, for God's sake, it's not a town. No, I know. And they What's call that them, about? Oh, I don't know, but they just, they don't have, you can't book yourself into a theatre and then get paid a wage. No, mm. it's all um, a share, of, a share of the profits. Yeah, what a co-op, <laughs> a co-op, yeah, a share of, mm. <laughs> yes. um, did you have trouble attracting talent down there or not? Uh, at the beginning, I did, um, and then it just got better and better, and partly because of the work that we were doing, I think, that we were able to, we started to get a reputation. Um, but yeah, it, it, I, I used to sell it to students that I used to go and visit at Toy Fakari and up here at Unitech, and I'd say to them, look, this is a chance to consolidate your craft. You actually just, after you finish training, you need to work and mm. work and work and work and work, and things that you really don't know about yet. And so that's, that's how I sold it to them. Mm. Mm. Of course, you're on Shorty. Yeah. For what, six years? Mm -hmm. Over six years. Six years, yeah. Mm, good. So we don't need to talk about that. Um, <laughs> let's talk about writing comedy. Okay. Probably your most famous play is Mum's Choir. It is, yeah. And that was based um, on your mother? Eh? It's on Mum's death. Okay. And it was about. Did she know? that you were going to write a play about her? Well, <laughs> I'd already written plays 
um, with mum as a character. Okay. Uh, my cousin Maureen actually came and saw one of my plays once and she said, oh, I see your mother's on stage again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's partly because there was so much of her that I, that I used to use. And some of it was just the way she sat, which was like that, she'd sit like that. And whenever I did that, the, the audience would go, oh, I know who that is. Mm, yeah, oh, <laughs> um, funny. But the, when mum died and she was, you know, she was, an ordinary woman and from a, everybody else's point of view I suppose but from our point of view she was our mum mm. and she was really important to us and so when she died it was huge for us but the world kept moving but actually I, I wrote about it because it was a unique time for us but when I spoke to other people about it it was also unique for them when they buried their mother it was significant and so we gave I wanted to tell the the, de the journey between death and burial, because often that is skipped over. It's like somebody dies and you're at the burial site, but actually it's the journey between death and burial which I find interesting. It is, it's the most, it, it's like you're stuck in a, in a sort of a time warp, isn't yes. it? It's yes. like when you first have a baby. Absolutely, yeah. it's exactly that. And, and then you realize that other people have done this? Yes. Have they improved and this? There's, and there's a world out there? <laughs> yes. Actually, you look at women who have just had new, I know what you've been through. Yeah, but yeah. You daren't. I reckon that's the worst time. In both instances, it's the absolute worst time. Just briefly, tell me about um, your next production, which is going to the Q Theatre, has been through your role at the Mangani Arts Centre. Uh, Wizard of Otahuhu. Yes. Wizard of Otahuhu is oh, the sorry. story. No, no. <laughs> I, 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 it all depends on the rhythm. Yeah. But the Wizard of Otahuhu is... Um, the story of the Wizard of Oz, seen through the eyes of this particular group of people in South Auckland, I've been working with for the last five years. And uh, we, each year we do, an, uh, do a new production. We use contemporary music, um, amazing choreography, and uh, an incredibly energetic group of people. So this year we've got 50 people on stage. And wow. they are amazing. Yeah. Uh, it uh, looks amazing. Yes. And the stuff we've got. It's just so vibrant. Mm. We, we've just done a season in April at the Mangari Arts Centre. It's sold out. And now we're taking it to Q Theatre in July, July 10th to the 14th. And uh, it's because we got such an incredible response. It's sold out. Fantastic. It's amazing. Is comedy easy to write or really hard? Comedy is tragedy. Mm. but with better timing. <laughs> um, it, it is, it's about being able to see life and then you can lighten it slightly or it can go the other way as well. I, I, I've watched actors like George Hanari who, for instance, I, I watched him place a line one time where we, where we laughed as an audience and then he just twisted it at the end and we wept. Mm. And so that's the sort of thing that I'm always trying to get. Maybe it's the, the comedy first and then the, then the twist of the knife or the other way around. So it, it can go either way, but it's mostly about being able to observe other people and then recreating it. Well, that's like your role that you have had in Funny Girls as, yeah. as the mother or, you know, it's absolute observation, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's those some... cringe moments that we've all had <laughs> with our mother. I know, I know. Yeah. It, sometimes it's me, yeah. sometimes it's my sisters, yeah. uh, sometimes it's my mum. Yeah. Well, I've met your sisters and all of you <laughs> yes. in a pack, quite formidable. <laughs> You're true, it's so true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, lovely talking to you. And you, my darling. Shook it in the trolley without checking the price. Wine for my flatmates, my mum's so nice. I'm sorry, darling. I might be pushing it to get to the airport with only three hours to spare. Let's do the groceries next time. All right. Let's take a look at what's happening this week in theatre around the country. The Court Theatre in Christchurch is playing Ideation till Saturday 23rd of June. Starring Laura Hill, it's described as an icy, sophisticated thriller where paranoia, conspiracies, atrocities and corporate strategy collide with chilling effect. Apparently the next genocide is being planned as we speak, designed by unelected people in expensive suits. The Ellerslie Theatrical Society presents House of Angels at the Stables Theatre in Ellerslie from June 7. And its subject matter is something I can identify with. It's about eight elderly discarded actors as they contemplate their future. This is a new play by Kiwi playwright Ruth Mayo, who now lives in London. 
Don't forget Morningstar at the Pump House in Takapuna. And if you're into high school musicals, then this is the time for you. Sancta Maria College in Manukau City is doing Grease. Selwyn College Kohimarama is performing Annie. Timaru Boys High School is showing Into the Woods and Lincoln High School is performing Guys and Dolls. The list just goes on and on. And for random news, Father Ted, the wacko, ridiculous comedy about three Roman Catholic priests exiled on a fictional island, is making a comeback in the UK as a musical. Both lead character actors have since died since the TV series, so casting is still in the early stages. When you're hot, you're hot. And this girl is so hot right now. Fresh from her hit show at the International Comedy Festival, You Do You Babes, 2018 Billy T nominee, Donna Brookbanks is with me now. Welcome, Donna. Thank you for having me. It sounded a bit creepy. It sort of sounded like I was coming on to you. you I loved you know, it. Yeah, I, I thought you were. You're so hot right now. <laughs> okay, because the last time we saw each other, we were camping. That's right. We were camping. Climbers, yeah. And that was so much fun. It was so much fun, it, eh? Yeah, it really was. I think that's probably the best set that I've ever been on because it was a, a total um, camping hut. The set, the set was insane. Yeah. It was And as so I remember, cool. you told a very naughty, rude joke about um, women of my age, bladders. Mm. Oh, it's yeah. Roger Hall's fault, really, because he wrote it. It is, yeah. <laughs> He's so sexist and misogynist. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's why we love guy. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, tell me a bit about You Do You Babes. Sure. So, is that You Do You Babes or You Do You Babes? That's it. And you you know, Do You Babes. You know, like, when you're like, live your best life, hashtag, um, living your, be your best self, you know, all that sort of stuff. Right. Like, trying to find your own place in the world and being happy with who you are and all that sort of thing. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. So, so just tell me a bit about the show. So it's kind of split up into um, bits where it's um, straight stand-up. I do a straight stand-up in it and I do a, a few sketches and then I also have these like nightmare bits where I started having these nightmares before the show um, well, like while I was writing the show, where I'd be like late for the show, or yes, um, a type personality dreams. Uh, is it? Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. I don't know you don't that, know what right? show you're doing. Yeah, you don't know your lines. I haven't written it. No, yeah. you haven't written it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's people I know in the audience. Yeah, that, yeah. It's, it was awful. So I was like, oh, I'll just put it in the Absolutely. in the show. So. And did any of that pan out? Uh, no, thank goodness. <laughs> Had a couple of tech issues uh, coming up with the mic, but okay. people thought it was part of the show, so <laughs> I'm stoked. Is, is that the show that you do it without your pants on? That's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. That takes a lot of guts. Well, all stupidity, I don't know. <laughs> oh, good on you, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I'm so bloody vague, and I wouldn't do that, but uh, yeah, honestly. Yeah, but you'd look great. Oh, and, yeah, oh, fabulous. I, I mean, I wouldn't do a nude scene on stage. No, Not I even don't, I don't at know, your age or, you know, at 20, I wouldn't have yeah, done a nude scene. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think I would. No, and I would say that's a huge relief for the audience, me not doing a nude <laughs> scene. So am I going to be able to see You Do You Babes again? Yes, actually, I'm doing um, a couple of return nights, um, ne uh, Friday, Saturday, 15th and 16th of June at um, the Tiny Theatre at Garnet Station in Westmere um, okay. at 7.30. So, um, yeah, really excited. Fantastic. Yeah. I'll be there. Oh, great. Um, so, do you have common themes in your stand-ups? Yeah, sort of. It's kind of, I have a lot of, I think it's really relatable stuff for girls like me in you know, their 30s who are um, professional working, might not have a boyfriend, um, but love being out with their girl mates and all that. So I get a lot of them, like groups of girls coming with like glasses of wine who sit there and go, yeah, <laughs> which I just love. So it's, yeah, it's all about, you know, that kind of age group when you're in your 30s and you're, you're not quite sure, you know, your friends are starting to have babies and mm. be responsible adults and stuff and um, just social awkwardness and, you so know. So is it all funny or is there a bit of sort of poignancy about it too? Do you know what poignancy yeah. means? Yeah, like, <laughs> um, yeah, I I'm think so. like <laughs> <laughs> You made me to the second guess myself. I was like, do I? <laughs> yeah, I think there's a bit of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I, I, I wanted to put a little bit of that in, but I didn't want it to sort of, uh, you know, you be don't like, want to bog it down. Yeah. I mean, it's just supposed to be funny. Exactly. And yeah. You don't want the thirty-year-old somethings who are drinking wine to suddenly get sad and tragic yeah, and yeah, they yeah. have a man. And yeah. Yeah. That yeah. wouldn't be good. Exactly. And no. I don't. I'm like, nah, mate. Yeah. Love your best life. Yeah, of course. Doesn't of course. matter. Uh, isn't it amazing how New Zealand comedy, especially, is going through this incredible? 
oh, I don't know, it's not a resurgence, it's just this explosion. Yeah. What is that about? It's so cool, eh? I think comedy's kind of become cool again it's or something. It's really yeah. cool. And I think that's probably... You're cool, Donna. Oh, it's all you. so alone. cool right You're now. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 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 yeah, it is. It's really cool. There's like huge amounts of people going through, um, you know, the raw comedy quest that um, Scott Banks runs at the Classic. Oh, yes. That he, I think he just has to keep um, extending how many heats and um, finals and stuff because mm. so many people want to do it, which is, is amazing. And so many girls want to do it as well, which is really, really cool, yeah. I think. God, I was in a, in a, a musical with Scott Banks when I was 18. Did you? Were yeah, you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And West Side Story. He was, he's just been given a New Zealand order. A gong? Yeah. Where's mine? I know. I know. God. For services to house whippery. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> do you do straight acting as well? Yeah, that's funny because I always wanted to be a straight actor. Like I wanted to be like a classical. You wanted to be like me. I wanted to be like you. Mm. Everybody does. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's really tiring. <laughs> But um, it wasn't until I was sort of at drama school that I was like, oh, actually, I really like comedy and it's really fun and I, I, I can do that and I can't cry on stage, so mm. maybe I should kind of go I'm there. I'm a bit like that too. I'm hopeless at crying. I can't do it. No, it's, uh, I'm digging my nails in like mad. I'm yeah. trying to feel it, but yeah. it just ain't coming. And nah. it's, it's awful, but it's worse on camera. Oh, yeah, I imagine, yeah. Yeah, because you know that the, the drops they put on your eyes to make you cry and stuff? Yeah. After a while, they don't work. Right. Yeah. So it's to, bad. I had to have that, I can't remember what it was for, but I, I, it might have been like a funny girl sketch or something like that, mm. and I had um, drops put on my eyes, and they just didn't work. Yeah. It was hopeless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the thing about cats? You Mwah. love cats? I love, I've no. got a cat called Stevie, Cat yeah. Stevens, and I just adore her. Mm. Yeah, she's like my little shadow, follows me around. You've got cats too. Of course too. I have. Do you have rag dolls? I do. Yeah. Mm. I've They're got Millie beautiful. and Louie. Have you got a new one? I have. Yeah. He's very naughty. Is he? But he's divine. Yeah. Absolutely love him. My aunt has a rag doll. They're just so great. They eh? are. They just like go. I know. <laughs> we could talk about cats all day, but yeah, there can. might be some dog lovers watching. They'll think, oh my God, forget yeah. about it. But anyway, that's your cat. Snort. Yes. Tell me about snort. So It's not something you do up your nose. No. Okay. I mean... Some people do, <laughs> and more power to them. But uh, Snort is a, an improv group that I'm part of that's been running for five, we've just had our fifth birthday in September. Brilliant. It's so cool, yeah. We, we do it every Friday night at the Basement Theatre in Auckland City. What, for the whole year? Yep, every Friday night, yeah. Ooh. Well, you know, apart from, um, sort of they take a break over um, December, January, we mm -hmm. take that time off, and then in um, March, April, we go to Melbourne for the Comedy Fest, and then we do Comedy Fest here, and then we have like a week off, and then back into it, yeah. Oh, brilliant. And Melbourne Comedy Fest, is mm. that, that's a big deal. Yeah, I think it's like the second or third biggest festival. Uh, it might be the second after Toronto or something. I, yeah, I can't remember. It's a big festival. It's mm. massive. It's insane. We've and been going for the last four years. Do you enjoy that? Love it. It's yeah. so full on. I bet. But it's so great, especially because it's just before New Zealand Comedy Fest, so you're just seeing all these amazing international acts and um, getting lots of inspiration for your shows. Do you stuff. think there is, is there a real difference between Aussie humour and Kiwi humour? Not really. No. I don't reckon. And does your stuff translate well over there? My stuff or snort stuff? Well, what's the, the difference? Snort, like the improv has gone, is going really well over there because we yes. get like special guests in so we get other Australian okay. comedians and oh, all that okay. sort of thing in. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, I, myself and Alice Sneddon, who's also a comedian, um, did a split bill over there, not this year but last year, and it seemed to go pretty well. Yeah, mm. I didn't, didn't really see any kind of difference in how the audiences reacted, whereas... Are they tougher audiences? Maybe. Or? I think because, mm. especially because in your head you're like, nobody knows me here. Yes. Um, th you, they just have what you're saying to go on. Like, they, they can be yeah. mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. They can be brutish. Yeah. Mm. But it, I went to LA last year and did a couple of open mic gigs, and I could feel they were like, why is she being so mean to herself? You know, yes, like that yes, self-deprecating yeah. humour that I, they just don't I get. I think um, it takes Americans quite a while to cotton on to our sense of humour. Yeah. They're not really uh, on the same wavelength yeah. in a way. I think they think it's mean, a little bit mean. You yes. know how, like I take the piss out of myself yeah. quite a lot mm. and I think they were like, mm, yeah. that's so sad. <laughs> no, I think, I think you might be right. Yeah. Hey, it's so good to see you. So good to see um, you, Thank And you. we're going to try a little exercise a bit later on that could go really well or really badly. Cool. 
Okay, now this is a bit random, but I've decided to try and do some speed improv with Donna. And so we're going to do one word each, and the subject that she has chosen is how to pick up a guy. So this okay. is tips for everyone. Okay. Tips for everyone. Tips for everyone. Okay. Do you want to start? Yep. Let's okay, go. How long are we going for? Um, until the, the tip makes sense. Do you know what I mean? So, like, once it comes to a natural end, yes. the sentence, then we go... Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay? Okay. Do you want me to start? All right, yeah. Okay. Always do your homework about picking up a guy. Because if he is a ago, yuck, then you run. Don't. Don't walk. <laughs> <laughs> but if um, he is a sexo oh. 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 make love to him right now yes 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay Lou this one is how to look after your cat you kick off okay um, make love to <laughs> the cat owner <laughs> to him and his friend's wife <laughs> that should keep them happy but not if the woman is sleeping with his cat or his cat's owner mother That is not how you should look after a cat. <laughs> <laughs> this Sunday night, June 10th, Monday our time, the 72nd annual Tony Awards will be broadcast live from Radio City Music Hall in New York. And this year there are some veritable megastars nominated. For lovers of musicals, the band's visit is picked to win against Frozen, Mean Girls and SpongeBob SquarePants. Harry Potter, The Cursed Child is favourite for best play, as is My Fair Lady for best revival of a musical. In terms of acting alumni, look out for Andrew Garfield to snatch best actor in a play for Angels in America. And 82-year-old two-time Oscar winner Glenda Jackson for best actress in Edward Albee's Three Tall Women. But Jackson isn't the only elderly thespian in line for a gong. The incomparable, one of my absolute faves, Diana Rigg, at 79 years of age, is nominated for Best Featured Actress in a Musical in My Fair Lady. Oh, to be sitting in the audience that night. That's all we have for you this week. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.